My name is Kanisha. Um, my life is a beautiful resistance because of the power of the word no. I used to be a people pleaser and I understood or started to learn that I don't have to do everything. I don't have to be available all the time. And that if something doesn't fulfill me or make me happy, then I simply don't have to do it. My earliest memory of being a black girl, I would say, um, growing up, my sister, Maxanne, she's my oldest sister, and she was born in Jamaica and then moved here. And she is fair skin with green eyes. So we'd wake up in the morning and she would just say, I would die for skin like yours. I didn't know if it was true at that point or like I wasn't even challenging whether or not it's true. And even now, I'm like, would you? Like, you're beautiful as you are. But she knew that even if I don't believe this, or even if I do, I need to say this to this girl every day. It's this journey that people don't see. Coming to, into myself and, and understanding and having Max stand there to explain to me that your blackness is perfection. And being a black woman in Boston is navigating these different scenes and just being fully black and being okay with that. And so I think that staying true to myself through the entire process, it's like if I was getting ready if I was living, you know, my best celebrity influencer life and money was not an object, what would my crew look like? Who would be getting me ready? As the creative director of Virginal, who's responsible for creating, introducing, building a luxury brand that I'm very much the face of, I think it's important that people see something that's different than what white luxury brands said they were going to do when they posted black squares. And that doesn't mean that it has to be all black. That just means that at the forefront of my mind when I'm casting, when I'm ordering the catering for photo shoots, that down to the very core of it, diversity lives there. Um, and I think that collaboration and that authenticity and that like blackness literally to the core of it all is, um, it's just what makes it all so special. When you talk about resistance and the power of no, you know, kind of embedded in that is this understanding that you know, I don't have to be available for everyone else, but I also don't have to be liked by everyone. Um, and so when I learned that it's okay that I'm not someone else's cup of tea, that's when I really started growing into myself. And it's like, when you stop worrying about, you know, how everybody else is watering their grass, then you can take care, you know, of your own garden. Competing in Miss Universe Jamaica played a large role in that because I just had to be my best self and that wasn't in comparison to anyone else. It was just, who is Kenesha and how can you be the height of, you know, this person? Black joy means living without fear and judgment and just being authentically black. You know the excitement you get when you're in a space where you weren't expecting someone else to be there and be black and it's like beyond the head nod at work when you see someone walking down the hallway it's just literally that happiness of wow there's another one of us that gives me joy. Black women are just magic. You see it and you like it, a black woman did that. My name is Tawny Chapman and my work is a beautiful resistance simply because it exists. I spent 15 years um, in photography um, and then after I had my son in 2004, I switched my lens to uh, focusing on children and in 2010 my father was diagnosed with prostate cancer and him and I talked about um, how it, amazing it would be if I capture his battle. It ended up that I was documenting my father losing his life to 
cancer and so that really just changed my relationship with what I wanted to do with my camera. The first human beings um, on the planet were dark skin. Um, dark skin is beautiful. Dark skin has purposely been excluded. It's not an accident, it's been done on purpose and so um, it's really important that I celebrate um, the beauty of black women, men, children, and families. Growing up, people would ask me, what are you mixed with, what do you, you know? And I would go to my mom and just ask her, um, I thought people were genuinely interested or so it kind of made me interested. And then I got to the point and I was just like, I, I think I realized what they were doing. I started saying I'm black and black, I'm mixed with black and black. I feel that we know black is beautiful. Um, and I feel like, I feel that I am affirming that beauty. I'm celebrating with every uh, negative thing that I've seen or read, the work is in response to that. One of the um, key reasons that I create this work, I remember going to museums with my children and we were just walking and walking and walking and then we finally came across a face like ours. And I just started to wonder how, how is this affecting my children? How is this affecting black children? How is this affecting black people in general? We may not know it consciously, but subconsciously, what does that do to a child? The things that we're exposed to, what we're told, what we're taught in schools, what we're taught by our parents and peers and TV and magazines, they play a big part in who we become in adulthood. In Byzantine art, a very big influence um, in my work, uh, gold was reserved for those of importance. And so I am in turn using gold to adorn people that are important to me, um, issues that are important to me. Um, and I'm repositioning our bodies in this style of work to relay this message. Before, when I was speaking and responding to those policies that were punishing uh, black men, women, and children for our hair, um, my subjects were more serious and, and not smiling. But now, I, I am capturing their joy. My um, piece titled Joy, and it's two little girls holding hands, but on the set, they couldn't stop laughing at each other. And, and I just was feeling this is exactly how we feel when we see black women doing amazing things. We're, we constantly are rooting each other on. We, we want to see each other win. There's just this sisterhood that we have. A lot of different layers within the work. As I mentioned, the gold, the use of gold, even the frames. Everything has its own meaning. Um, even our hair, I will amplify our hairstyles in response to the politics and the policies that basically ban our hairstyles um, from schools and in the workplace. And those are just a few of the, the messages and meanings behind the work. This is one of my favorite pieces. It's titled um, Covered Vienna from my Awakening series. Um, it's a five that I painted in different ways, and this is the one that I decided to keep for my children. I relate most to this piece, and I feel that a lot of black women relate a lot to this piece because I think that we feel that we cover and protect our children. Being a black woman in America is a godsend. Black women are amazing, we're leaders. We tend to lead the way on all fronts. God knew what he was doing when he put me in this body. Um, and for the rest of the years that I will be in this body while I'm on this planet, um, I will make use of being a black woman.
My name is Opa, and my life is a beautiful resistance because I woke up today with breath in my body, because I'm loved, and because I love. <laughs> Being a black girl in Boston is a miracle. Um, it is a beautiful thing to be alive and black and woman anywhere. Um, and I think in a city like Boston, where it's particularly hard to be any one of those things individually, it is amazing to be a part of a community of black women who have survived um, so much to just be here and to enjoy life. I watched Crooklyn and she was getting her hair done. And I just thought it was like a regular experience, the way that it all went down. And it wasn't until I had an aunt who came to my house and made me sit um, on the chair and she was gonna do my hair. And um, she had the cookie can full of grease and the hot comb on the stove. And she put it in my head for the first time and I heard that <laughs> Like I heard that crazy noise and I was like, what is going on up there? And then I, I got up and then I had these two puffs on my head. And I cried because I was like, what? I've never seen this before. I've only had braids or like perm or whatever. And it was my first time seeing my hair like do this thing. And then I remember Crooklyn. And I remember how fire that movie was and how dope this little girl was. And I've always felt akin to her. And I just remember like there's something unique about that. And it must be that we're these black girls with this hair. And there's something unique about this experience of getting your hair hot combed on a Sunday. I think we're beautiful because we're amorphous. And I think that we're so fluid as human beings. I think we have to have an understanding of, at any given time, our place in the world. And I think we're a living embodiment of knowing that we can be everything and nothing at the same time. I think we're at that specific, like, juncture of wisdom in our, in our existences. This black girl joy, when they tell you you ain't worth it because they don't know how to hurt you, you deserve that, baby. This for the black girls and the brown ones. The performance of myself really brings me joy, but also just the community too. I love black women. Like you could be anywhere in the world, black femmes, anywhere in the world, and another black femme sees you and we already spoke to each other without ever saying anything. I remember I was just shooting a video and a little girl walks down this av this Ave and she, she's like, okay, we popping, we lit, we lit, we lit. We was like, girl, thank you, we love you. And then, and then home, my homie was like, you know her? I was like, nah, she's just a black girl. Like, that's how we do. Like, and I think, I, I know I'm a part of a club anywhere I go because of that. I think another thing that brings me pride in being black and femme is I think that I'm a byproduct of my mother's efforts and then her mother's efforts and like all these other black women doing what they could do to make sure that I got here and that I'm here in this body in this way right now. I want us to have a quality life experience, quality experience as spirits and human bodies on this earth for whatever time we're here.